what is this here? I mean, I'm just making videos, right? Maybe someday somebody will be interested in my videos. It's dated noon on February 24th, 2020. I found it in a book. This is when you still could go to libraries and you could go inside the library and you could just look at books. This particular library won't let me in. You have to be registered and you have to go through a scanner. They've been put together these different scanners than they used to have. And unfortunately, even if you go near the scanner, I'm very, very, very concerned about what those students have to go through, especially because I actually reported to security when there was an incident in the library for the business school, and they just didn't do anything about that before COVID-19. And this is from before COVID-19 too. Yesterday was the anniversary, so today would be one day after one year. I just happened to find this in my notes. Somehow I lost track. What is it? Found page 361. Begin page 359 of West Military Justice Reporter, volume 66. United States versus Sean P. Bright, Sergeant First Class, U.S. Army, number 07-0269, criminal appeal number 20020938. Oh my God, I have 38 cents in my reserve. Oh my goodness. A 200 and then a 209, and I have 38 cents in my reserve. Oh my God, what is this? What is this? U.S. Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, argued April 8, 2008, decided June 9, 2008. Background. Accused was convicted by General Court Martial Ronald W. White, J., of raping a female trainee on three separate occasions, forcible sodomy, maltreatment, and violating a lawful regulation by wrongfully having a relationship with a private Attempting to violate a lawful genuine regulation by wrongfully asking a private to have a relationship, adultery, and impeding an investigation. The United States Army Court of Criminal Appeals affirmed. Review was granted. Holding. The United States Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, Erdman J., held that evidence was legally insufficient to support rape convictions. Affirmed in part and set aside in part. Then it lists the keys. I'm not going to tell you what the keys are. Oh my gosh. You mean these keys? Oh my God. I found them yesterday. Quote, consent, however, may not be inferred. If resistance would have been futile, where resistance is overcome by threats of death or create bodily harm, or where the victim is unable to resist because of lack of mental or physical faculties. This is in Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces. Explication of consent. Let's read that again. Consent, however, may not be inferred if resistance would have been futile, where resistance is overcome by threats of death or great bodily harm, or where the victim is unable to resist because of lack of mental or physical faculties. And the next day, you want to try to hustle some deals connected to legal pot on me. Hmm. Does this call up questions of mental faculties? Wow. So if you're not legally able to discuss or make determinations to demonstrate consent because you have impaired faculties, then the problem with this case and the appeal was that it wasn't able to be demonstrated that consent had been explicitly refused. That's what happened on the appeal in this case.
USMJ Article 120A, 10 USCA, Section 920 CA, and CM 2005, Part 4, Paragraph 45B. Force and lack of consent. Force and lack of consent are separate elements of rape, but there may be circumstances in which the two elements are so closely intertwined that both elements may be proved by the same evidence. There is another case that is in the civilian jurisdiction, but did make it to the Supreme Court of the United States, which does have the authority to make rulings in regards to cases that have gone before the military court system that discusses considerations regarding using the same evidence for more than one charge. The case I'm referring to started in Oklahoma. It's an older case. What was the time frame we were working with earlier today? Ah, the same time frame of that case. Yes. But more than that, there's another case that I've made vocal files for, and I've also described after a perusal of the commander's handbook in regards to JAG cases or cases regarding the Judge Advocate General that discuss situations where the charges that would be appropriate, especially in consideration of trying to determine whether it was merely fraternization or whether it was coercive, compelled sexual performance, or if it was actual forcible sexual assault, are to be evaluated in the context of the other crimes that should be considered when somebody abuses their power and attempts to unduly influence somebody who is otherwise competent and capable and responsible for being competent and capable in other manners. Understanding that you have a position of leadership or authority in connection with the livelihood of somebody else who also has a particular kind of leadership or authority in regards to people that would then be evaluated based upon their leadership brings into consideration other matters that should have been addressed by whoever was the legal representative for this woman Telling her you want her to come join you in a hotel room after work, after she told you she's not interested in a personal relationship. And then trying to engage her in sexual activity and threatening to take into consideration her underst understandings of her performance based upon her compliance with meeting you in that hotel room is about more than just the actual rape. That rape is a predicate of other crimes 